Hey guys, welcome to another F2L well Tricks, and today I'll be teaching you the basic ideas of multi-slotting. For example, in this case, if I were to just insert this pair normally, then I end up with this very bad F2L well pair, and I'd have to solve it like this. But if I change the way I solve this pair, I can solve all of these together like this. The idea here is I have two ways of inserting this, either R U prime R prime, which leaves me with this case, or I can do U and insert it with a double move, R U two R prime, and that gives me a much better case. I showed you one case, but I don't expect you to memorize this one exact multi-slot case. In general, how can you know which one you should use? If you were not thinking about the second slot, then the most efficient way to solve this is like this. So if you have not predicted what comes up next, then you should always just solve it normally. But if you're using look ahead in your solves and you've done a case like this with a corner in the slot enough times and edge here enough times, you'll start to realize how these two get affected. For example, the edge here doesn't move. And the corner here will change its orientation based on how it started. And in this case, it just ends up white top here. So you can pretty easily predict that this is going to be a bad case. And so the simple rule is if you realize you'll have a bad case after inserting, you just insert the other way instead, and you'll probably have a better case. You won't always get a case this good, but if you just expect your average case, it'll be much better than the worst possible case that you are looking at. So I'll show a few more examples. Since this is one of the worst f cases, I showed the one where normal inserting puts it over here. So I'm just gonna put it back here and see what happens. So in this case, if I normal insert this, I'm going to get this case in the back. And so instead, if I did the other insert, which is like this, would you look at that? It's another paired case. Now this one's a little easier to see. If I insert this one, I have this one that's just going to still be there. So instead I insert it the other way, and then I get this case, which is not amazing this time, but of course it is better than the other one as it saves about three moves. The one case I didn't show is this one, and this is where you can see if you insert this, this one moves by R, and so you're gonna get this case back here. And if you insert it the other way, you're going to get this case, which is kind of equally bad from this angle because you have to like do more moves and then do L moves. Instead, for this case, there is one trick if you'd like to study it, but it doesn't really fall into the category of all these, and that's just if you insert this the last possible way, which is with a sledgehammer. And then there you end up with a solved pair. But I find that more in the realm of memorization because it's a little harder to visualize how Sledgehammer removes pieces and you don't have to use it as often as it's not quite as fast. If you're just starting to use this, one of the easier ways you can use this is by affecting corner orientation when the edge is not affected. So there's only really one piece to think about here. As long as the edge is slotted somewhere, then this is a really good idea to use. Here, if I insert this, I'm going to get white on top. You can see that from the very first move I do. And this is a bad F2L well case. Instead, if I do it the other way, then I end up with the corner orientation being different, and then this ends up being a much better f 2 case. You can also use the idea of inserting certain ways to influence other pieces if you notice you have multiple pairs you wanna save. This is one example you may have run into where your first time running into it during a solve, you probably completely didn't know what to do and just ended up splitting one of the pairs. In a situation like this, if you sledgehammer one of the pairs, sledgehammer only affects the pieces around here, so you don't have to worry about this pair. So that would look like this. And this pair is saved. And not really the idea here, but in this specific example, you can just add one move before the last part of the sledgehammer to solve both pairs. I just think that's kind of cool. Another multi-sliding idea I want to show is when you have a slotted pair next to where it should go. Ignoring the other pair, the fastest way you can move this is like this. And that can be done quickly like this. And here it is from the other side. And faster. It's better than taking the pair out and inserting because if you took it out like this, you'd have to rotate to insert. Or you could do reverse sledgehammer, which switches hands. Or you could take this one out with sledgehammer and insert it, but that again switches hands and grip. The multi-sliding idea here is if you have this pair, you actually shouldn't move it over, but instead you should solve the other pair first usually, and then put it in here and then put this one in here. So in this example, I can solve this pair easily like this, and then insert it. Then lastly, just insert this pair. But if you have a terrible case, then you can just do this case first. So make sure it's not on the front because things on the front tend to get preserved with this. So I'll just move it anywhere else like here, and then do this alg. And now this is a much better case. 
I'll mention another multi-sliding idea, but I won't go too in-depth into it because I have another video, but here's just the intro to the idea. If you ever have a corner and edge both solved, they can be in different slots. You can just solve the other corner and edge in order to have two F12 pairs solved. So you just have to put these two together and then solve these two together like this. So just solve this normal F2L pair and then put it all back. This idea for multi-slotting is called pseudo-slotting and it's an extension of keyhole. So if you want to learn more about those, I'll put the video up here. This video includes some basic ideas for multi-slotting, but remember you can also do more like doing more with sledgehammers to set up other cases and just learning algorithms for certain combinations of cases. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.